Hey everybody, Steve here making another video showing you uh, actual painting and clo uh, close-ups of the painting. And I'm going to try to describe a little bit of my process. I have not yet made a video showing the steps for these kinds of skies and the water where there's these smooth gradations. And uh, I still hope to get to that. But this is a painting that I did a while ago. I just took it out of the frame because I'm going to send it off to the gallery in London. And while it's unframed, I thought I would do the same thing as I did with the last one. This painting is a, is a little bigger than the last few things I've... Uh, well, the last one I showed was 11 by 11. This is about 16 by 22. Just to give you an idea, there's my hand with a brush, kind of showing you the scale of it. I don't usually go much bigger than this. Here is uh, the whole painting. And now I'm going to zoom in. And um, the sky and the water are done while the painting is horizontal. Uh, the beginning steps, anyway, are done where, where it's horizontal and I'm painting wet into wet. Each color is done in many, many layers, just a little bit at a time. And um, I'll have to show that in a separate video. But I want to zoom in and you can see how after I get those background layers done and some of these soft clouds, I then go in with a brush using a dry brush technique. I kind of feather off um, just a little bit of paint, real softly creating the look of those clouds. And um, when I zoom in on the water, you'll actually see that I did it wet into wet as far as I could go, but you don't have that much control when it's wet, uh, wet into wet. So I actually do this dry brush technique where I have a lot more control. And when I zoom in close, and this is pretty close, let me um, put the brush here so you'll see. It's kind of a stippling effect. Uh, it's very similar to drawing. So there's a million brush strokes, <laughs> basically. A million brush strokes that create the look of these waves. The waves are very distinct shapes. Uh, if this was all done wet into wet, it wouldn't look like waves. It would look, um, you know, just too sloppy. And they wouldn't be distinct enough because when you paint wet into wet, things just kind of go where they're going to go. So I do it wet into wet, as many layers as I can, and then to really define things and to darken, this is when I go in with these millions of little brush strokes, which are transparent, they're overlapping, and I can create distinct but soft edges. That's the key. When you do wet into wet, just pure wet into wet, you have soft edges for sure, but you don't have enough control over them. But when you do just dry brush by itself, it tends to look too uh, textured. So this is kind of a, I start out with wet into wet, and then I go in and refine and define and darken with tiny little brush strokes. And as I zoom in close, I'm gonna see, right now my camera's only, I don't know, five inches, six inches away or something like that. Uh, let me get my hand here again. As soon as I let go of the camera, it starts to jiggle. So sorry about that. But this is, now you can see the size of, this is a, um, this is a zero size brush. So this is the kind of brush I would be using to put all these little brush strokes in. There. Uh, you could do this with an airbrush. And I, could have done this with an airbrush. And I don't have a um, philosophical problem with an airbrush. I really don't. It's not like it's cheating. I just don't like it that much. It's too uh, risky. You know, you hold the button down and it starts to shoot paint out and all of a sudden everything's just ruined. Um, also, it can look too mechanical. It looks like it was done by an airbrush. So, you know, I'm always going in between this, uh, you know, super hyper photorealism style. And then I, I think to myself, well, it is a painting. I don't want it to look like purely a photograph. So if there's little tiny brush strokes, I think that adds to the charm. I think that maybe adds to the, um, the humanness of it. It was done by a human. It wasn't done by any sort of machine. So those are my thoughts when I decide to do this technique as opposed to using an airbrush for some of those soft edges. Now, if this was an acrylic painting, I would probably be much more inclined to use an airbrush if I was to uh, achieve this effect because you don't have the ability to do the wet into wet uh, that you do with watercolor. 
uh, unless it was acrylic on paper, then you could sort of use a watercolor technique. Um, but if it was pure acrylic on a panel, uh, airbrush would be a really good solution. And of course, if you did have an issue with the uh, airbrush, you know, doing something wrong, you could just cover it up with a new layer because the, the acrylic would be opaque. But this is a watercolor, transparent watercolor. Uh, let me zoom in now on um, some of the work on the, uh, the sand. This is not super detailed work for me because it's just a bunch of sand. It's all in the shadows. So I didn't really go overboard with um, trying to create the illusion of sand. You know, a million little brush strokes. There's a lot of brush strokes, but it's pretty, um, I don't know, for me, this is not super detailed. Again, let me get the brush up so you can get the uh, sense of scale. Because this is this um, this painting is really trying to give a, uh, a feeling of a, a kind of a mood. The the details weren't nearly as important for the for the foreground. Obviously, the chairs have more detail. Really wanted to get the look of the um, the lacquered, painted wooden chairs, which are reflecting the sky. So now I'm going to zoom back out. And uh, th these colors on, on the camera right now, as I look at them, are not ideal. They're not quite right, um, which is what's to be expected from just using a, an iPhone. But you get the basic gist of it. Let me zoom in over here to show you this dark piece of land. You can see it's really dark. There's a little bit of texture there. Even if the photograph that I was referring to had it as complete and utter black, I would never really paint it that way, I don't think. Because um, black works in photographs, black, just pure black, doesn't really work in a painting. It just tends to make things look flat. So I'm, it's, it's a very dark green. Some people ask, do you use black paint? I know some people say never, ever, ever use black paint, ever. And I use black paint. <laughs> I rarely, uh, rarely use it by itself, but I do use it to tint other colors to get things dark enough. I will always lean towards making things a little more colorful. So if I was using some black, it's, it would be in combination with blue or purple or green or something like that. Okay, I'm zooming back out again. And there you go. Hope that gives you a little bit more of a clue as to how I do this sort of thing. It's not magic. It's not, uh, you know, any certain special trick. It's a series of things or a combination of things that I do. And I uh, hope to explain more of that in videos to come. But thank you for watching and I'll talk again soon.